French speaking? Yeah. Hi everyone, I don't want to spend loads on the introduction about panic or artist development for Tetley because you've probably heard it all already from the other talks. Um, so as I said to a few people earlier, I haven't actually done a session like this before, so it'll be really great to get your feedback afterwards, hear what you think. Um, so the reason why this session came about in terms of how to work the studio visit was firstly because um, about a year ago an artist I was working with asked me what even is a studio visit and I think that's like the first kind of cornerstone like what even is it like if you may have been lucky enough or fortunate enough to have gone through like formal arts education or university maybe you know you did have like a one-to-one -one tutorial with um, a tutor or like peer support crits so you know maybe you had a little bit of an idea about what a studio visit is but in a really informal way or using kind of different languages like tutorial, crit group, um, I think like, what's it called like in, in theatre, I think they call it like this, maybe a scratch session or something like that so I think um, it's really kind of different for everyone and I feel like if you maybe also have not gone to uni and have not gone through like formal arts education or maybe have come to your like arts practice through um, health and social care or day kind of art sessions then also like it is a, you know what even is a studio visit and I know it sounds really kind of clear it is a visit to your studio but um, there are other things kind of weaved into that that I kind of really want to unpick and chew through. Um, the other thing is about them is that like this is kind of I, I, you know speaking to artists that I work with and colleagues and other kind of networks is it's really hard to like pinpoint what it is and it is so different for everyone so what I'm gonna chat to you now about is like also just to acknowledge like my own perspective on it and ideas around it and actually you are welcome to take what you want and throw the rest out of the window. It's not prescriptive, um, these are just kind of like some ideas to kind of get you going, um, some things to think about, some practicalities and bits like that really. Um, so, so to start with, yeah, what is a studio visit? Um, these were some of the things that I thought of kind of from the top of my head, but it's like getting maybe some fresh eyes onto your work, uh, getting feedback, some criticality, um, just maybe opinions, support, uh, a soundboard, maybe you want to widen your contacts in that horrible of network word. Um, maybe it's just having a visitor, or having another bodily presence in your studio space, which actually might be a space where you know, you work in isolation or as an individual, you know, maybe some peers come in every so often or other people in maybe your studio group complex or your bedroom or your housemates, you know, wherever you practice. Um, and actually it can be quite like an isolating thing and having just another body in the space to kind of engage with and look at the work, seeing, you know, what people are drawn to first, how they kind of navigate you know, whether it's sketchbooks, things on the wall, things pinned up, notice boards, random workings on your desk, a kind of mock-up or a maquette on the floor. You know, there are so many things that um, someone might be drawn to in your space and just having like another presence there can be really, really useful. Um, and I guess the other thing is having like a bit of signposting just having someone else's like research, reference, artists and curators they're interested in, um, just kind of gathering other research material can be quite useful. But I think in really general terms, what is a studio visit? It's a one-on-one, -on -one. it's an intimate kind of experience, it's a chance to be personable and get to know someone on like a one-to-one -one level. Um, but it is also like what you make of it. So what is a studio visit? It was also like, well, what do you want to get out of it? So I think that's something else like to consider in like how you even set it up or consider it, I guess. So it's basically like you're inviting someone to your studio or to your 
house or where you practice, but also you're not just inviting them, like they might also ask you or like you might be invited and say, oh, I'd love to have a studio visit with you. Um, and you know, it might happen from someone that's kind of inviting yourself, but asking as well. Um, so I kind of was thinking about like, oh, well, there are actually, I think there are a few different types of studio visits and not to put it like in a binary, but it might be a mixture of both in that there are two things. Firstly, it's speculative and then there's intentional. So what does speculative mean? Well, it's kind of very much like very loose. There's no preconceived or pre-ideas or intentional purpose. It's just, oh, like, I want to get to know a new artist or get to know someone else or get to know you, um, get to know what's happening in a certain like place. So for example, Emily, like, you know, practicing in Wakefield and Helen and, you know, it's like, oh, someone might be like, oh, well, you know, I would love to have a studio visit with, um, you know, an artist who's based at the art house or an artist who's based at um, where you are in the Mary Collective, if you're still in the writings, but, you know, like, it, it could be speculative as in, like, getting an idea of the geography where artists are practicing. It could be getting to know you personally. So I think speculative is really kind of random, but just generally, like, wanting to have a studio visit with you. So um, that takes up, like, I think most of the studio visits, and most of it is really speculative. It's just oh, getting to know someone really casual, informal. There's no purpose to it. Well, there is a purpose to it, but there's not like there's much of a clear intention. Um, and then we have the intentional side of the studio visit, where a curator might invite you to their studio with like, hmm, I'm interested in those artists, hmm, for a show maybe, or for a residency, or oh, I really want to kind of scope out this artist's practice, see where they are, with something in the back of maybe a curator's mind or an artist's mind, or maybe like a writer as well who might want to write about your work. So when thinking about it that way, they have got maybe an intention or an idea or seed that, oh, they've seen your work online, they might want to work with you, but there's that kind of um, purpose to it that actually, to be honest, they might be, depending on who they are, they might be transparent about that, or they might be um, quite obscure about that. They might not, they might keep it hidden and not tell you that they're going with this purpose. So that's really challenging. I think that's like a really hard thing in the sector to grapple with, that actually someone might have an intention that you don't know about when visiting your studio. Um, but I think either way, you go into it as an artist with best intention and so do they and actually all you want to do is have like really positive engagements with an artist in the studio space um, and this could be applicable to whether you are receiving an invitation from a curator another artist a peer a writer whoever it is it could be that they are giving you this invitation as a speculative one or as an intentional one and then in that case you've got totally like the right to say oh can I ask you know, what's this for why are you particularly interested in me you know why now you know is there something that I can really I can prepare for in particular that would be really useful for me to know first um, and I think it's totally like right and should that you, you ask that um, if you are being invited. But then the other thing is you might want to invite a curator to a studio visit and then you're just like, oh, so is it a really speculative one in terms of like thinking about the purpose? So getting to know them as a person, just wanting to show someone new your work or do you have like an intention to it? You'd be like, oh, I really, I really want to know this person. I really want to show an X or X or X. And do you have your own intention? And actually being also really transparent about it because it is a two-way process. Um, does anyone have any questions about that kind of bit to begin with? So we can do questions at the end too, but I like the conversation. Um, 
So the next thing is like, well, why, why have a studio visit? And I think this comes back to the purpose. So even though you are thinking like speculatively or with intention, like what is, what, what is that? Um, so it could be, oh my gosh, they aren't time, okay. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> Love transitions. <laughs> um, so it could be any of these reasons and more, and totally so much more. So uh, I'm just gonna read them all out as well and go through them. So firstly, is it just wanting a new person to be familiar with your work? Now you could be thinking about this in terms of Oh, it's a new discipline, it's a writer, or it's someone who's involved with a sculptural practice or interest in sculpture. It could be, you know, you think you could be thinking about art kind of mediums, it could be thinking about different circles of connections, or it's just like someone else to chat to who you're just really interested in. Um, is it because they might have kind of access or um, interest in working with different audiences. Naturally, are you thinking about your audience as an artist and how it might land with kind of, um, I don't know, maybe it might be you want to work with specific communities or thinking about how it might land with certain participants if you're kind of a socially engaged artist. So it's really thinking about, well, you know, does this person run a community group and actually can kind of facilitate connections there with new people. Um, the next thing is resolve the unresolved work. Have you got a piece of work in the freezer that you've been, you know, <laughs> letting it thaw away and you want to get it out and finish it? Well, this is the time, you know, it's like, is there something that's just like in the back of your mind that's just that naggy work that's been in your list that keeps you putting back for years and actually do you need like support or help with that? Um, the other thing is time, like time's always such a privilege, right? We're like working part-time and then trying to like earn money for your, the rent in the studio and then when you're in the studio there is this pressure to like work and make the most of the time but then you're unproductive and you know, is it just time with somebody else that is happening in a more like structured way that actually makes that one hour so much more productive and useful than if you were just practicing for an hour on your own in the studio. Um, and I think sometimes that time can also give you quite a bit of a boost, right? It can just kind of springboard you. Your you might be energized after it, you might be really excited, you might want to follow up on the things that the person said in the studio visit. So I think that's, that's always a good thing. I think, yeah, really, really, really good thing. Um, and then, yeah, again, new connection um, or network kind of thing. It could be like gain pointers or suggestions for like other artists to look at. Um, now, it could be like a mentoring relationship. So, if you're in a really fortunate position to have been able to get funding, whether it's through the developing or creative practice grant or whatever else, it could be actually you're looking to develop a long-term relationship with an individual um, in terms of like relationship building and I think in terms of this um, we were speaking about it this morning I was speaking with we were speaking with Ellie Pennick in the kind of commercial art gallery thing and it, it's all about oh, how do you work with artists who do you choose to work with and I think here it's like this is long-term relationship development is so underrated and I think not going in with the like the bold question like oh i want to show can i have a show with you it's just like oh oh i'm really sorry like oh like it's just it's it's about that long-term genuine authentic engagement because when people start to know you as a person and your practice then actually um it can be like more rewarding just to have like someone else who you're really friendly with um instead of going for like the short term win, I guess. Um, then also any advice as well. It could be advice about going for a specific grant or funding application that you know that they've gone for or any kind of advice. Um, I would say with asking for advice though, it's really worthwhile like knowing your personal boundaries and knowing their personal boundaries because sometimes you know you might want to 
share something quite personal and you might feel like, oh, that's appropriate, but it depends who you're speaking with and actually you want to make sure that um, you're both comfortable and like those boundaries aren't crossed in terms of like, I don't know, if it's anything like really personal that needs like um, a content notice or trigger warning, usually you feel like being in a personal intimate space with someone might bring that out a bit more and actually, you know, is that appropriate? Yes, no, just kind of think about how much you want to share and don't feel like you have to force anything to kind of evidence maybe, I don't know, if you kind of, I, I really, one really thing that I struggle with is like, um, something that I've noticed semi-recently is how um, artists sometimes feel like they need to evidence how they have been marginalised or underrepresented or historically silenced to be able to get opportunities and I think just think about how much you want to talk about yourself, how much you don't want to kind of talk to talk about yourself and I think it's just really um, it's a really fine and delicate balance but I think it's really personal to everyone that I can't really kind of cover fully here but I think it's just something worth thinking about like yourself. Um, and then think about like, oh, community links, other introductions that they could make for you, which is really useful. And then um, just to practice studio visits, you could have a studio visit to practice a studio visit with somebody else, um, which could be quite fun, I mean, like a draft run with someone chill, you know. Um, and then, yeah, just get to know them on a bit of a personal level as well. So that, again, that long-term relationship building. Um, there are other ways that you may want to work or engage with galleries, you know, whether it's, for example, a commission for an engagement workshop or, um, I don't know, like illustrations on hoardings. I'm just speaking because we've got loads of development work around us at the moment. So, you know, other ways in that actually could be kind of an interesting or alternative way that isn't so obvious as oh, I really want a residency, I really want a show. It's like thinking of outside the outside the box, gosh I hate that phrase, but um, kind of horizontally, thinking about different ways to kind of engage really. Um, and then also to uplift others, like I have so much respect for artists and people who you know might use their studio time to be like oh, you should also check out this artist, or, oh, this show is opening soon and it's, you know, my community or artist-led space, and that is really, really nice to get, A, pointed to other things or recommendations, it's really not selfish, it's generous, it's um, to uplift others if you've got someone in that room with you who is really important um, or really worthwhile knowing, it's like, oh, you could really also help other people and um, I think that's, that's really good as well. And then finally, like, you want something. You might want something, this is where the intention part comes into it, but like, if you don't ask, you don't get. And I think having the confidence to do that is great, but also just be careful, like, um, you know, just asking like straight up for an exhibition, it's like, whoa, it's just like, puts the person who, you're with in like this position of power in terms of, oh, you've got this possible opportunity and it's really uncomfortable and it kind of really puts a, a tone on the studio visit that actually is quite reductive. Like, you know that they're there because they want a show and it's like, actually, a lot of the time it's like, unfortunately, you know, I don't know, like technically we work with three solo shows a year, which is actually so few people and it's really hard to be able to be like, oh, like, I'm really sorry, and it's okay to say no. And, um, you know, we, we, I have to do that a lot. But it's also like, having that courage to ask sometimes as well, it's okay. So it's about just, what do you want from it most? And actually, would it be more useful to uplift your practice and network in the longer run, compared with kind of like, going in with like, a sh short term kind of, like, oh, I'm just gonna, put it out there and see if it lands and it's a bit more risky I guess. Um, so yeah. And then like with who? So I've kind of like oh, tried to distill a few ideas about who with who. Um, it's quite 
kind of yeah friends peers studio holders then you've got like a wider network or local artists it could be like those acquaintances who are based like locally who you know you've always thought oh i've really admired your practice and we've met at loads of launches before but oh my goodness um like i've always wanted to chat and there's never been a time so let's just get something in there um and then also like local or regional so artists writers and curators then we've got national artists writers curators and then obviously international etc so for a bit of fun lol i've <laughs> I've done this graph, okay? I just thought, you know what, what happened if I actually thought, okay, so let's just try and plot out how easy and difficult it is to get studio visits with certain people. Um, so, of course, like, friends more willing to have studio visits um, for free and happy to arrange within a week or two. Like, very kind of quick win, fun, happy, I don't know, I just, like, I love having studio visits with friends and it's just, it's great. Um, and then kind of like local practitioners or studio holders, people in your wider circle, it's like, oh, this is, you know, it takes a while to arrange, but it happens, it happens. Um, then again, like institutional curators or directors, oh my goodness, time is so like short. It could be that you email like a curator and it's like, they happen to have just started an install, that lasts for a month. Then they've got 300 emails in their inbox, which take two weeks to get through. Then by then you've got like, you're six weeks in. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, this person hasn't responded to my email. Oh my gosh, they don't like me, they don't want to see my work. Oh no, it's always time. Time, 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 it's so difficult. And when there are hundreds of artists in the region that we want to see, it is so, so like, yeah, it's so, so difficult, really. Um, but it's not like impossible, it just takes time. And I think it's just being patient with it. Remember that curators like should be up for seeing your work. It is our job, okay? It's our job. Um, like, if not, or it doesn't work, like, and maybe there people might be making so many or too many excuses, it may be either a they might be just not particularly interested in your work and that's okay it's a really subjective thing it's one person out of like the whole art sector it's fine like this happens people might not like your work and it's you know um, yeah that's it and it's really hard to say um but and i, I never say actually which is but, but yeah it's not a personal thing promise or if they're busy, like I said before, or, um, you know, it's not that trying to make excuses, it's just, I don't know, I guess the pace of the sector, just, there's always stuff um, going on. But um, if they keep making excuses, they don't turn up, they cancel, it's the third time you've rescheduled, don't bother, they are not cool. Okay, you don't, you don't want to have a studio visit with that person anyway. Um, so, yeah. Um, and then, yeah, basically, if you have, like, been lucky enough or have got, like, DYCP or funding, then maybe you can, like, make that ask and maybe go through or generously ask, like, an institution like us to make, make an introduction. You know, we can do that. We can put people in touch with other people um, if that is of interest and that kind of thing. Um, is really useful but again a lot of the time it is like money it's time it's a personal thing it's if the person you're approaching is just interested and available it can be a perfect storm it can work out really well in that they're free they're in between projects they've got the time they're interested in the work amazing um but then yeah other times it, it can be really really hard um, i was going to populate this with more fun artists but I, yeah is a work in progress. Um, so, making invitations. Okay, you're diving in. Here's an email template for you. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll make sure what this is online and stuff as well. But so yeah, I'm gonna kind of go through it. So, 
dear, how to say? I hope you are well and looking forward to the spring. It's going to be springtime. Um, I really enjoyed lots of them, right? So it's like, oh, have you seen the show that they've done recently or curated? It's like, you know, that kind of breaking that, um, an icebreaker, I guess. Um, it really resonated with my practice, current interests, something like that. Now, I'm getting in touch to ask if you may be interested and available. They're two different things. They might not be, they might be interested or not interested. They might be available or not available, so. Um, for a studio visit with me, in person or online, um, at your convenience or in the next month or so, do you have a deadline? Like get time in there, if possible. Um, and then, or you could just say, whenever you want. Keep it really open. Hold them to account for many, many years. <laughs> <laughs> Keep fishing. <laughs> could, could work, not work, but actually what is the worst thing that can happen? And I'll go through the worst things that can happen. <laughs> um, so then, you know, we're thinking about like, oh, I'd be interested in chatting with you specifically about my practice in general, my recent work or project, or upcoming exhibition. It's like going in there with that intention is a really good thing. So all the way back at the beginning of the presentation, it's like, what do you want out of this? So that they can be prepared and um, look at your portfolio or your website with that in mind, I guess. And then this is, this is the key thing, why? It's like, it's about really pinpointing well, why this person and why now? Like, is it because of your yeah, network connections? Is it because of your discipline? Is it because how you work with artists? Is it because um, you know someone who you want to know? You know, the mutual friends? Um, so having a familiar link, whether it's, oh, you're based in the same place, or you've both recently been to this launch, or having some kind of link already, is a really positive step to be able to like bridge that gap. Even if you don't know them, trying to find a connection somewhere, whether it is up here about their work or whether it's a link between your work, your person, your experiences and them. Um, so then it, you know, this may help me in and then your intention. So what I was talking about earlier, why have a studio visit? Um, and I think the time thing is really interesting to think about because you might want to say, you might want to keep it really open. I will have one with you in the next five years. I don't mind <laughs> when it is. Just, you know, and actually, you don't want, like, I guess it's like, yeah. I think it's really interesting because it's like, if they don't see your email for two months and you've got a show you're working on, and actually it might not be useful by that time, you know, you might want it for a specific purpose. So I think it's like good to be clear in terms of times, like why do you want it then and, and yeah, why is that important? And then please find attached my recent portfolio. Um, now I, this is a personal thing, I, um, I, I totally don't mind, I like being linked to maybe specific web pages or you know, a work with a link to a web page or another work with a link to a web page. But I think it's nice to be kind of guided into your work instead of being like, oh, here's a link to my website and it's like your whole website with all of the works from like now since, I don't know, 2003, 2014. And it's just like, oh, there's so much work here, but, but you know, it's also different and your practice has evolved so much. So what specifically are you trying to draw my attention for? And actually, you might want to really tailor this to um, different people. It might be that with somebody, when you're inviting them for a studio visit, it's these two works, and with another person, it's more photography-based works or sculpture-based work. You know, if you, have, especially if you have like more interdisciplinary practice, um, that that could work. And then, yeah, just a selection that demonstrates your practice. And yeah, looking forward to hearing from you. You know, very best wishes, stuff like that. Um, and then, ah, okay. So I guess here's like, what can go wrong? Like, it is a really brave thing to put yourself out in the world 
So maybe, yes, they are there replying. Maybe they don't reply. Maybe they say they're not interested. The best thing, though, is that you've got in their inbox, your name is there, you've shown them your work, they've probably seen your work, um, and you've increased your reach a bit. Like, what is the worst that can happen? It's just that dreaded, like, oh, palpitations, press send, eek, <laughs> or schedule send for 8 a.m. in the morning, because I'm a busy artist, I'm on it. <laughs> you know, just that kind of thing. Um, and I don't know, I just think, like, what is the worst that can happen? Just go for it. Um, and eat yourself in gently, practice with your friends, peers, etc. Um, and also, if you find a hyperlink to like the director's email, it's likely going to go to a PA, then spend time in the PA's inbox, um, and then you know it go to an email or general info. So again, that takes time if it's like an institution to get through those things. It's a bit annoying, but bureaucracy, I okay. guess. So where, like, you can have a studio visit without having a studio. It could be in a cafe, in a community centre, in a library, in a public place. It could be like um, on Zoom or digitally. And if your practice is in like your bedroom or house, it may be a bit of a stretch. Only with, with bedrooms, I think, because of safeguarding in mind for you and your guests, so you're both like safe and comfortable. Um, so. But, you know, if you're, I don't know, like Clay, you've got Yonder Gallery, you know, that is a gallery in your house, right? So that is totally like natural, comfortable, fine. But if you are practicing in your bedroom, I guess it's like, think about A, where you'd like to meet so you're both comfortable, but B, what kind of, um, is really personable, what means most to you? like. Is it Starbucks on Albion Street in the city centre? Probably not. Is it the community centre in the city practice um, or a library? You know, maybe that's more appropriate. So um, it can totally work if you are practicing nomadically or don't have a studio space. It's just how you think about how you want to present your work and in what scenario and what medium you use. And okay, the sculpture is not going to fit into this cafe in Nero. Not going to happen. So yeah. Um, and then the next thing is what to prepare. Oh my gosh, okay. It's not a big thing like preparing for a studio visit, but there are some things you might want to think about. So they are like intimate acts. So, firstly, um, access. So, like, this is also good to teach other people as well, in that you don't assume, like, for example, um, an art a visiting guest might not have any access requirements um, and I think even just asking that in an email beforehand you know you can't go wrong it's a two-way street and also you may only get a response like asking where the nearest car park is for their like fancy pants SUV but <laughs> I think it's mostly like it shows you're going in that open and unassuming and it's showing that as an artist you are like you're prompting them to not assume that someone may not have access needs. And I think even just those little gestures and moments where actually you are kind of um, maybe showing someone like best practice in a different way through like a studio visit. And yeah, you know, it's not, it's just, it's also just good practice anyway. Um, but next one is um, if you want a specific format, so if you find like you prefer having a quiet one-to-one -one, or you prefer getting feedback via drawings or um, notes or you you know things about if you just prefer other ways to communicate with someone um, kind of making that clear beforehand is really really useful for both people so you both get the most out of it um, we've actually got a session with um, Sam Metz and Nicholas Singh on uh, quiet crits. So again, I recommend taking learning from that. Um, I mean, yeah, and applying it um, to this if you need to. The next thing is in advance heating. Let them know if it may be cold and to bring a coat or scarf. Um, just because some studios, some studios only, not winter studios, like so. Um, 
and that's okay, that shouldn't put people off, it's just letting people know, really. Um, don't overthink the biscuits. Um, <laughs> vegan, gluten free, doesn't matter, um, I guess, just you're not, don't, not expected to know all of this stuff about the specific person. Just do something that works for you, it is the thought that counts. And if they don't eat it, you'll have loads of biscuits left over, and it's fine. Just a polite decline. No one's going to judge you, but having biscuits is great. Kind of a good icebreaker. Kind of maybe keeps them in the studio for a bit longer. It's a win-win. Um, same with hot drinks too. Um, make sure the milk hasn't gone off, um, and no one's like drunk out the milk cup in the studio. I don't know, but it's possible. Um, if you're in shared studios, make sure there's enough toilet roll as well. Um, just, just because it's useful. <laughs> um, and then the other thing is like, cleanliness is a really contested thing. Like some people really love a really clean studio um, and some people don't care. I don't particularly care. I think it's really nice if you are able to still access and get around it okay, but so that there's like loads of stuff everywhere. You know, I love being able to see loads of things and lots of points and entry points to get into your work. I think that's really, I think that's the best. Um, so I think a clear, tidy studio space is definitely overrated. Like I love to see a lot of things to talk about, um, but then also like some people, yeah, I wouldn't go overboard with the cleaning. It's a studio space for goodness sake. That's what it's for. It's, it's meant to be messy. Um, so yeah, and the other thing is just digital. So if you have any digital works, I'd recommend sending like a small bit in advance just so they can see it beforehand. So you can spend most of your studio visit like making the most of it instead of like watching the film for 20 minutes. Then by the time you've then got into it and had an icebreaker, you've only got like 20, 30 minutes left. And I guess with the time, it's, it's good to be mindful of the time. Um, I would say like minimum an hour for sure, but just be prepared like for, I don't know, half an hour more whatever but it's okay to ask for breaks if you are like really uncomfortable or you know there's anxiety there or you really just need to take a break and step away you can totally just say excuse me do you mind if i have a break for five minutes and um i'd like you to look at you know feel, feel, feel free to look at this in the meantime or that in the meantime and then you know you can take a break like that's totally fine um and no one's gonna like yeah get annoyed at you for taking a breather. Um, and then I would say, moving on, does anyone have any questions about that bit? Um, so then getting the most out of your studio visit, like it is an hour, it's not going to solve all of your problems, issues, challenges, concerns. So it's like, how do you get the most of it? I would say, firstly, like, tailor it as much as you can to this person. Um, maybe aim for like three things you want to get out of it. If it's three questions or three opinions or ideas or whatever you want, just try and get three in there. Think of it like as a, a, a bell curve, like you're going in with the icebreaker, the easy questions, then you get into the really nitty gritty, like things you need to really chew and gnaw through, really challenging questions. And then you slowly like work it back down again to kind of finish and end on. Um, so I would say then 20 minutes like on each, so maybe like warming up, then chewing through it, then winding down again. Um, and I think if um, if you kind of get to the end and it's like, oh, I'm a bit earlier or I'd love to spend talk, more time talking with you, then it's like, oh, well, do you mind if I ask a few more questions? Or um, do you have any questions for me you'd like to ask or anything you'd like to know about my work? Um, that can also be a good kind of end point. Um, but if you'd like to like follow a specific structure to talk about your work, then definitely kind of highlight this in advance if you kind of, you know, want someone to kind of you know, just look at your work first and you don't say anything, you know, it's just like coming cold to it, I guess. Like how much preamble do you want to talk about your work with? Um, that's also quite, whoops, that's also quite like 
a personal thing um, as to what you want, so I'll come back in a little bit. But the other thing is like, oh, prepare a what next, right? You might have just come out of your first solo show, a residency, the busiest time, and got a studio visit with someone. Someone is always bound to say, oh, what's next for you? And just, well, I'm just like, just give me a break, please, just, you know. And that happens quite a lot, but I always think, have like a few projects in your mind, just like, oh, I'd really like to do this next. Maybe a short-term project, a longer-term project. Say, oh, well, if I was to ever have a show, I would love to, a solo show, I would love to do this. This is like my dream. Or, you know, I would love to um, work with this collection or this archive, or you know, really think about the dream um, and really put a seed in someone's mind for like going forwards in terms of your ambition. Even though it might not be like a, I really want a student, you know, I really want an exhibition with you. It's saying, I've got like you know, the ambition, the enough body of work. I've got you know, the ideas and to kind of to do this specific thing. It could be really like abstract talking, but I think um, leaving the studio visit with something hopeful and exciting is really nice. Um, but yeah, it could be you're too tired. Then at this at that point, you just say, "Excuse me, no." <laughs> like that sort of thing. Um, so I guess like when talking about your work, like expect. To talk about your work and explain what you do like it's really interesting how some people kind of go all the way around with like explanations analysis why and how without being like oh I am an artist who makes installations about hostile architecture or whatever like that I don't know but it could be thinking about well like just just like imagine your artist statement and like the first sentence of that just even that is a really good way of just oh, orienting yourself, your, both of you in the space. Um, and yeah, don't kind of force it um, or try not to like second guess or over analyse your work. You know, with nervousness, it might be you end up being like, oh, you're just, oh, like I, I always over explain things and I always sometimes feel like, um, yeah, it's kind of hard often, um, especially for example, if you might be like neurodivergent, how you actually um, kind of receive cues and kind of are able to communicate your work in a way that isn't like um, mediated or changed because you're nervous or because it's a specific person. You, know, you want to feel like comfortable in their presence, but also sometimes this just happens and actually over explaining can like narrow down the conversation um, but also it can expand it out in that you might be providing loads of amazing kind of starting points and the person who you're with stu in a studio is it with might just suddenly like be like oh right well in this next hour we're going to pick out this 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 and this and actually it can be a really positive thing so um i would just say um, think about how you're talking about how you want to talk about your work in advance of the studio visit if you've got like a little plan um, that's like loose. And yeah, okay, just take a break. Um, and then the other thing is like, oh, that's, I don't want to show that, sorry. <laughs> but basically, yeah, you can do what you want as artists um, and you can just completely throw all of this out the window if you want to. This is totally like, um, it's down to you, it's down to you making it personable. If you want to play Gloria Gaynor as an entrance to the studio visit, you can. Like if you want to show your favourite drink or have a homemade cake or, you know, really make it so it works for you and so you are most comfortable. Even if it's like, oh, you have a favourite candle or instant stick or whatever, like, that's quite, well, yeah, that's quite good as well. So I think just really make it personal for you, make it comfortable for you. Um, and like your work is that like is that gift it's a really interesting and a generous thing that you're doing sharing your work with other people um, so yeah just making sure you're comfortable and happy with like terms of engagement with you and the sort of person um, 
I think that's it. Um, does anyone have any questions? Or oh, just want to chat, actually. If anyone wants to have just a general chat together. Yeah. Um, um, so I, I would be really interested to know what your advice would be on um, navigating a collective studio visit. So I suppose where, where I would have some confusion is maybe, you two tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> so what I'm thinking is um, if, there's a, if we are working as a collective and as a collective we want to invite someone over to a studio visit, Within that time frame, is it fair to try to introduce this person to our practices on an individual level as well, or is that going to be immensely overwhelming? The kind of work that we put forward, do we present ourselves as individuals and talk about our individual practice and then how that feeds into our collective practice? Um, I think it's that differentiating between the two, whether we just present ourselves as a collective or whether we try to um, also incorporate some um, more personal individual um, yeah. as well. I think um, like the more the merrier, I think that's great. Um, I think it's probably thinking about, well maybe you can make a day of it or a half day of it. You can all chip in, get them lunch um, or show them like, other places around where you are. Um, so I would say use it as like I said, the strength really as to what you can show them. Um, just, I guess it's thinking about the, st the structure of it a little bit and I guess just time planning mm -hmm. because you want to make sure that it is useful for everyone, mm -hmm. it's not rushed, everyone has equal time, but also that you collective gets the nourishment, the investment as well and the support. So it could be that you kind of, you know, it could be like 10am, arrive at the Merry Collective and have like um, an hour talking as a group mm -hmm. and then having a break, um, going and having a little walk around fresh air is great. Studio visits on the walk or on the run, yes, would do. Um, but like being able to then come back to the studio, have maybe 45 minutes with each person and make sure they're comfortable, they've got enough breaks while they're chatting to someone, somebody else could be making tea or coffee for them. Um, I think it depends on how much time that they have and how badly or how much you want to see them mm -hmm. and actually it could be that um, it's worth thinking about their time depending on who it is and actually um, if they can request or would like a fee thinking about actually affordability in that sense um, and maybe just everyone speaking and everyone having a long session with them might be more worthwhile because everyone still get fits um, but can still be engaged. So I think it's on a really real kind of case by case basis and depends on who it is, but there are definitely ways you can like make it work and make like more of a thing out of it, I guess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah. you. But then it requires more time and organisation and planning, so yeah. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a question, but maybe a bit of feedback that mm -hmm. if I send a letter to somebody, or email somebody and let them. I'd rather they tell me they didn't like my work and not reply to it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's <laughs> the sentence to say to them. It's like, um, <laughs> I mean, you could be polite, uh, as it isn't in, you know, it doesn't tally with your interest at the moment or whatever. And then there's always a glimmer of hope that at some point it might tally with your interest. But I would rather know that 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 is not something that's going to happen and then just be, yeah. you know, just what, have yes. no yes, 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 yes. I think um, it could be, yeah, just think of a little sentence to say to these people who don't reply. It's like, um, um, I would really appreciate it if you could um, give me the courtesy of letting me know whether or not you were interested um, and whether. Um, whether it is down to my practice or your current programming, just so I'm able to explore other avenues and um, not waste both of our time, mm -hmm. make it seem like wrong. Because it was, yeah. I went to um, a webinar with Calls for. Oh, yeah. Um, over, over lockdown, and one of 
piece of advice there is if you get a no, do try and find out if you possibly can what sort of no it is and differentiate, you know, I don't mind it working, I never will, from um, maybe you could, uh, maybe you could, you could better go down this, um, a kind of deflection, but it is something that doesn't happen, that provision of, you, you don't get to know why, you just, if you just don't hear anything. Yeah, um, exactly, and actually if that person, that curator, that individual is really invested in artist development, then they like should tell you why and they should be transparent about that. So I mean the truth probably is as you described, um, just complete overload on the on the person that you're contacting. That they can't possibly reply to all these things. But yeah. Yeah, I think it's just yeah, I think it's just a lot of there's so many artists obviously practicing actually, mm. you know, yeah, so so many emails um, from artists like, but it's not it's not like a negative thing. It's a positive thing. It's like it's 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 like you're being it's like you don't have to do the work. You've got everything being in your inbox. Like, what are you talking about? It's not something to complain about. Um, so I, I I totally see what you're saying, Helen. I think. A sentence like that would be perfect in terms of, you know, would you mind quickly letting me know why this is um, to get that reason? Um, but yeah, um, I've worked with Cause Four before, and arts fundraising and philanthropy, and they are they're really good. Mm -hmm. in them, so yeah, that's good to know. Um, yeah. It kind of strikes that that could be a benefit to both parties though as well, so that. Um, and, and I guess it could actually automatically become the, the response. You can easily um, I approach some new task if they work with our project, and their response was great because they were really keen, but they weren't available. So that kind of left the door open that if I'd like to approach them again in the future, I felt like I could rather than going, well, they just, that's a straightforward no. Um, yeah, as, as a, an artist who's inviting somebody, you'd want to know, well, shall I ask again here, or should I just leave it? You know, you don't want to keep asking somebody if you're interested in their idea. Yeah, I think it's worth, like, trying to work out, oh, maybe, maybe they're doing a project, or maybe you know that they're working on something in, in particular, so it's like, okay, well, I'll give it, give it this amount of time. But I think getting a definite answer, you know, that's not asking the world, that's asking for, like, a tiny two minutes. That's, you know, and they've already, might have the answer in their head, it's just, it's just, you're having a chat, I think. Um, yeah, no, I think that's very valid, and yes. Has uh, have any questions there? So, like, you, when you mentioned, like, building a mentorship, like, for long term, and it's like, how do you keep continuing the conversation? Like, Especially when you start, like, because you might have worked together or might not know each other, and then you go from there. But because it might sometimes it could be like an anxiety thing that you could feel like, oh my god, I feel like I am uh, just bothering them because I'm like getting in touch. Like, I got in touch with like at this time, but I, I'm getting in touch with them now. Like, what would they think? Like, how do you go about like, because I feel like. After a while, the relationship it's easier to be like, hey, like, how do you feel about having this conversation? And you can make time, but like, how do you go about building that, like, getting to that stage, and feeling comfortable with it as well for you and as well as the other person? Yeah, I think um, it could be just even starting with a few like practices with other people, your friends, with um, peers or other people. Um, I think also, you know, yeah, anxiety and imposter syndrome is like super real, depending on also who you speak to. But I think in terms of your time question as well, it's like, well, you could try and just ask, well, how much time do you have in April or in May? And actually, you can just like look forward to it gently and build up to it. Um, I think with mentoring, it kind of depends on on what terms and like what you're asking for. It could be like, you know, do you want to have an arrangement where we meet up like twice a year even just to have a chat for an hour and just check in it's like critical friends or um 
So it doesn't have to be as formal, like, will you be my mentor? Or, yes, I will coach you, but, you know. Um, and I think it's just, it's, it can be quite, um, the language that you use and you choose to use um, and how it works for you can also, like, be your power, I guess, in being able to be like, look, it's going to be a really informal chat. Um, and that's totally fine as well. So I think, yeah, building up relationships with people just takes a lot of time. Um, but I think if you kind of really think about like, oh, how, how do you want to chat with someone and what they have time for as well? Because you want to make sure that the time that they are giving to you is like thoughtful, it's worthwhile, they're not rushed, they're in the best place and position to do that. It's also like life happens with maybe with you, with them, like things get in the way. And actually it's like you want to make sure that you're both in the best place to give and receive feedback and talk about it. So if things are delayed and things like that, then you know, when you finally meet you can just laugh about it and say, Oh my gosh, you know, how have we just only just, you know, how have we only just kind of got together, I guess. It's kind of like a awkward speed dating really. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it just takes time. Yeah. Also, I guess another way to is maybe I wouldn't have a, you know, do a show or you, you kind of make some of new work subsequently, maybe sending them emails or even like people in touch with you if you do something by maybe a like a QA sort of person who can be done on the system and be I mean, that's why I don't always think of the way I'm not, but it could be one way to keep yeah. those conversations beyond that first meeting or project. Yeah, James, you do that really well. Yeah. <laughs> you do that well. <laughs> yes. Um, but it's like, yeah, when you have a show, you invite someone to the show. No, I mean, it's a compliment, don't think. Yeah, yeah. It's a really good thing. Yeah, like yeah, send documentation. Yeah. yeah, it's like, oh, send them documentation. Say, oh, I'd love you to see you for the open night. Oh, I'd love, love to welcome you or whatever. Um, then here we get into like, oh, it's, like this is the professionalism. Oh, <laughs> like being professional, what does that happen? It's, it's uncomfortable, it's weird, but um, I think, yeah, just kind of keeping people updated, like really informally about what you're doing. You don't have to create a whole like a survey monkey thing for it, you know. Yeah, I think um, just send them like gentle emails or not just out, like, hey, I'm doing this, or oh, hey, I'm, you know, love you to come to this. Um, or you could say, or well, if you can't make it on the launch night, uh, I'd be welcome to show you around another day when the show's open or um, host you another time, like later on, um, which is also totally valid, yeah. Yeah? Okay, well, I'll, I'll stick around anyway, have a chat if you want to. Um, but yeah, thank you, everyone. Thanks, thanks. Don't come, please, don't come. 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 Please,